The next puppy in this was delegating filter chain, filter chain, was the uh, spring security virtual filter chain. You guys see that down here? So, hold on. So there's this virtual filter chain in our, uh, here. It's a filter chain proxy, and this is a pluggable virtual field filter chain that is uh, part of Spring Security. Has anyone worked with Spring Security? It used to be called CG and so like that. So it's just a, a pluggable filter chain that uh, has its own configuration. So the first one in that uh, is this mutable logout filter, which is just going to handle logouts. If there's a logout event, or uh, it, then it will um, catch that and log the user out right here before touching the rest of your application, right? Uh, the next one is this request holder authentication filter. And this, this guy just um, sets, the, sets it as a HTTP server. It sets the security request on the HTTP server request and response, right? So it sets an attribute on the request and response. So that you know about, so that each request knows about the security context that is acting. Next puppy in the chain, we're looking at um, the security context aware filter. It, it, all it does is it wraps the request and response in this uh, security context holder aware request wrapper. So, it acts, so you can access the uh, security request or the security context. Tongue twister, huh? Um, we we uh, delegate to a re remember me authentication filter. So you have a little checkbox that you can click to remember me. Uh, it's cookie based remember me uh, authentication. And you can set it up to have, you can only do certain actions with the remember me or you it forces a full login. That's where this stuff is going to happen. Next puppy in the chain is going to be this um, anonymous uh, authentication filter. So with Spring Security, everybody has a uh, about principle. Everyone has an identif identifier, right? It's either your user user ID or it's an anon or you're anonymous. Your security context is anonymous or it's specific to what you're logged in as, right? So this is what's going to handle um, the anonymous users and setting up the anonymous users if they weren't logged in. Um, this one's kind of interesting. Uh, this is the exception translator filter. Um, this can hit, uh, translate, um, let's see, remember the authentication exception translator, oh yeah, so if you request a resource, if you don't have access to that resource, it'll throw an exception, and this is the point where it will catch that exception and then translate that, so if I access a, a protected page, it kicks back and says, whoa, this is protected, you're not logged in. This is the point where it would redirect you to the login page. It would save your request, redirect you to the login page, so that when you logged in, it would then restore your request and redirect you back to where you were trying to uh, access the first place, right? So that's, that's where this is happening. Um, let's see, the next puppy in this chain is Filter security interceptor. So there's a filter, and then we're back to after that, we're back to the back out of the spring security. After we passed everything, we're back to the application uh, filter chain, right? So we we talked about the security context persisted filter. We talked about the mutable logout filter. Um, Remember the authentication, this security context holder aware request filter is going to put things on the request like the authentication, the remote user, the user principal, and uh, the user is in mobile. So there's some extra, extra thing to tax on. Remember me, we talked about uh, anonymous, and this filter security interceptor uses uh, annotation based. Uh, so you put annotations on your controller actions, and uh, it knows to read those and, and figure out uh, 
if you have access to, to that or not. So that's what we just looked at in the, the Spring Security Virtual Filter Chain. Um, we're almost through. After the Spring Security Filter Chain, we're reporting to the Grants Page Filter and the URL mapping. So here we're in the page filter, which does some site mesh stuff. Has anyone used site mesh before? Right, no, one person, two person, two people. So site mesh is uh, a filter that once you render a view, it decorates that page. So you can render just a standard uh, HTML document, and it will take the body of that document and mesh it together with a layout. So you can have a consistent look and feel across the whole site. Instead of the whole header, footer, you know, uh, includes or um, using another templating language like our tool like tiles or something else. This is you render your view and then site mesh takes that view and meshes it together with the layout to create a consistent view. There's a lot of intricacies in that. And in the Grails world, they're, they're called layouts. So this is going to handle the, the layouts. You can you can do some of that stuff in there too. You can you can specify different parts of a page and then have it mesh together in one consistent layout. You can set page properties. You can do some pretty dynamic dynamic things there. So you can communicate between you know different uh, pieces of your page. So this does all the site mesh stuff, uh, content processors, web app contexts, uh, if you get into that. But the, the brunt of this is actually going to uh, obtain the content. So it's going to go to the controller action and get the model of view and render the view, and that is considered the content. And then it's going to um, apply that. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the back up. And there's this whole mapper you can say for HTML pages, use this book, this layout. For XML responses, use this layout. For uh, markup, you know, markdown, use this layout. Uh, the next point in the, the filter chain um, is the URL mappings filter. So uh, we kind of cheated here. Uh, before we got to this point, it actually, uh, in the, uh, sec the security filters, it actually determined what URL to route uh, to. So it determined what URL it needed to go to because it had to do that to figure out if you have access to it or not. So it did that already, and now we're forwarding the requests on. So this puppy um, matches the URL, does a bunch of stuff. Matches the actual URL and figures out where to uh, delegate that to. So here it determines that, um, let's see, controller action at this point. Uh, anyway, it's, it's forwarded this to this to a very specific URL mapping, a routing, if you're familiar with who we have So from this point, it's forwarding this request. Um, to the URL mapping. Forwards it on a couple times, um, some more delegation, internal application forwarding, until we get into a whole, nother, a whole new realm of the application dispatcher, right? So we've, we've gone through the filter chain, now we're dispatching uh, the request, right? So here we're into a, a different realm. We're into that application dispatch. We've already determined security. We've already wrapped the request in a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, trial, trial and error stuff, and error handling, and all that. And now we're actually getting to meet it. We're getting into our application. We're actually going to uh, send this to an, our actual action. We're going to render a model of view. Uh, we're going to uh, inter interact with these interceptors. So uh, Grails has this concept of filters. So you, there's another pluggable filter, a set of filters you can use that are application specific that you can execute before a controller action, after a controller action, or after the view is rendered. And then we're going to get into the actual Grails controller and our code that we actually wrote. It's amazing how small the actual app controller action is and how, long, how much it took us to get to here. How much code 